For me, that was too much. But if you're giving it to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, that was too bad. So if, I want you to shout, give the praise to him because he is good and his mercies endure forever. No, 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 no. Come on, VFC. You could do way better than that. Okay. Can I tell you something? When you go into a stadium, you know who's winning by how loud they are. And I think that I know who's winning because Jesus won us the victory. So if you believe you're victorious, I want you to shout a shout of praise as loud as you can. Somebody clap your hands and give praise to the Most High God, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He is, he is so awesome. He is so great. He is amazing. And this morning, I believe that the devil will be terrified, that God will be glorified, and the saints will be edified. Amen, 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 amen. amen. We've been having some meetings, um, and thank you for your hospitality and the time that we were able to spend here. And why don't you clap your hands and give praise for your pastoral team and all the leaders here. They're doing such a marvelous job. And you are so blessed to have all these leaders uh, leading and pastoring you. Thank you very much, Pastor Jeremy and Carissa have been uh, just wonderful. And if you don't like them, we'll just take them to Ghana. (laughs) Amen. Amen. But I'm going to speak real quick on preparing for a move of God. Preparing for a move of God. Somebody say preparing. Preparing. For a move of God. I I believe that God wants to do something in the world today among churches. But specifically, God wants to do something in this church. That a move of God is getting ready to break out in this church like never before. And God wants us to prepare for that move. Because You can be ready and unprepared. You you didn't hear what I said. I said you can be ready for a move of God and yet unprepared. Now, uh, when you read the Bible, the the Bible talks about the the ten uh, um, um, uh, virgins and five were foolish and five were wise. And not... uh, all of you are wise. There's nobody here. It's all the people outside. They, they're the foolish ones. But in VFC, everybody is wise. I thought you would clap for yourself. I mean, they, everybody's wise. Not, so I'm not talking about anybody here. But uh, the Bible says that five were foolish and five were wise. But all of them were ready to meet the bridegroom. But they were not all prepared. Because being ready and being prepared are two separate things. And you can be sitting here and say, I'm ready for the move of God. I'm ready for what God is going to do. I heard Pastor Jeremy talk about the harvest. Get ready for the harvest. I'm ready for the harvest. And yet you are not prepared for what God wants to do. Because planning gets you ready, but strategy gets you prepared. No, 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 I thought you, you, you didn't hear what I said. I said, planning gets you ready, but strategy gets you prepared. Yeah. Let, let me give you an example. So you, you're planning to have a wedding, right? And you go out, you put everything together. It's all looking good. And you're getting ready to do it outside and excited about it. But it's the rainy season. And you never thought that the rain was going to come down and ruin your party because you never prepared for the rain. So you were ready for the wedding, but you weren't prepared for what was going to happen. And God does not only want us to be ready, he wants us to be prepared. Are you here? And if we're going to receive what God has for this church, and our lives, then we need to build our lives in such a way that we are ready and prepared to receive what God has for us. So I want you to look at Matthew 7, verse 24 to 29. Matthew 7, verse 24 to 29. I want to show you something. Matthew 
uh, 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 7, 24 to 29 says, Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who builds his house on a rock. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. But it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. If we're going to be prepared, we have to make sure our foundations are right. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. I said, if we're going to be prepared, we have to make sure our foundations are right. And the Bible says that, number one, the rain came. Now, the rain in Scripture many times represents the blessing. Okay, okay. Now, a lot of people want God to bless them, but they're not ready to be blessed. One day I was preaching at our youth service, and one young man walked in, and I, the, the Lord spoke to me to give him a word that, can you stand to be blessed? And I, I, I started speaking to him. I said, can you stand to be blessed? Because God's going to bless you. And, and God started blessing him so much, he got six promotions in one year. And he wasn't ready even for what? Because whilst I was saying, he said, yeah, 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 yeah. Because everybody thinks they're ready for a blessing. Until God begins to bless you and you realize you weren't ready at all. So the Bible says the rain came but didn't destroy it. Then it says the flood came. Now the flood are bad times and bad situations. And we've got to be prepared for bad and the good. And the reason is sometimes God's blessings come through bad situations. Okay, 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 okay. I'm all by myself. I'm, 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 all, I'm all by myself. Sometimes God's blessings come through bad situations. Uh, if you don't believe me, ask Joseph. God was planning to bless him, but it was going to come through a bad situation. And sometimes God's blessings come through bad situations. So when we say get ready and be prepared for what God has for you, you got to be ready for the good and you have to be ready for the bad. And the Bible says, and the winds blew. The winds represents change. The most constant thing in life is change. Now, we don't like that. We, we don't like that. We don't want things to change, you know. We, we, we don't want things to change. You know? we, we, we want things to remain the same uh, until you start losing your hair. And you look in the mirror and you realize you're losing hair. You're like, oh, Lord, I'm changing. Uh, but things are going to change. Uh, okay, okay, okay. I tell, I tell our young people all the time, you know, people are getting married and they, they're looking at the girls. Oh, look at it. She's so pretty. And that's the only reason why they marry her. Well, guess what? <laughs> Things are going to change. And then after a while, when uh, she's no longer a size eight ooh, or a size six, and things start changing, then their marriage starts becoming a wreck because things are going to change. And he says that the winds blew because winds, every time a wind blows, weather changes. It depends on what wind blows. The wind that blows determines the weather that you have. And so he said he built his house in such a way that when the changes came, he was prepared. Are you, are you here? Yeah. Now, now the, 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 if we're going to be prepared for what God has for us, then we need to build capacity. Good. Tell somebody, build capacity. Build. Now, I'm going to share with you real quick the four major ways that God will build your capacity. Number one, God's word prepares us and builds our capacity. God's word, when, when, whenever God wants to do something, he begins to give you his word. And he begins to build your capacity. 
and, and it, it, things begin to enlarge. Faith begins to enlarge inside of you. When you hear your pastors preach, when they begin to give you the word, the harvest is coming. God is going to do something. It begins to build a capacity inside of you. There are 452 times in the Bible, the Bible uses the phrase, and it came to pass. Because God said it before it came to pass. If you read the Bible throughout the Bible, before God ever does anything, he says it. Before Jesus came, a word came through and said that Jesus was coming. So that there will be preparation towards what God is about to do. And I hear the word of God saying to somebody, get ready for what God is about to do in this city, in your life, in this church. Be prepared for it. Genesis 21 verse 1 to 3 says, The Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did to Sarah as he had promised. So before God ever gave Abraham and Sarah a child and manifested the miracle, he gave them a word. But he had not done anything yet. But he gave them a word. You know, there are some of you listening to me now. Oh, well, I, 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 it's just a word. It's not just a word. When God gives you a word, he is preparing you. He never does anything outside his word. And so he will give you a word. The problem is some of you took it serious. Some people didn't take it serious. He gives you a word. Watch this. Psalm 105 verse 9 says, Until what he had said came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. He's talking about Joseph. God gave him a word to test him. Gave him a word to build him up. Because he was getting ready to make him a ruler of the nations. And I believe the word of God is coming to you and building you up. Yeah, One day Jesus shows up in the, in, in the Bible, talks about Jesus shows up and the disciples, they've been, they've been um, fishing for a while and they, they, they've caught nothing. Nothing. And Jesus shows up and you know what Jesus does? He had, the boats were empty. He asked for an empty boat. And he gets to an empty boat and he sits down. And he starts to teach. Mrs. Peter is waiting in the house for her fish and toasted bread. And her husband, Peter, has caught nothing. And Peter is terrified because Mrs. Peter uh, might not be very nice about the fact that her husband didn't catch anything. And when Jesus gets there, he doesn't do a miracle. He sits down and starts teaching. This is the problem we have. You come to church, you, you're looking for healing. He don't heal you immediately. He starts teaching you about healing. And you're so busy wanting healing that you're not listening to a word of what he's saying. Because you're thinking, I have a problem. I need a job. I haven't paid my bills. And here you go. Blah, 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 blah. Could you just zip it? And he keeps on teaching. Can I tell you something? One of the major reasons for delay is because you don't listen. Because Jesus is not going to do any miracle until he's done teaching. And the Bible says when he had finished teaching, he said, lunch into the deep. Let's go. 
And they go, and Peter said, we've tried all night. We've caught nothing. Isn't, isn't it amazing how you can do one thing and get no results, and yet another time you did it and got results? Because Jesus was in the boat this time. Mm. Uh, you, you, you might have did the same thing before. And he said, we've caught nothing. But he said, at your word, we will dig into the deep. Now, wait a minute. Where did Peter get that faith from? From the teachings of Jesus. Somebody was listening to the sermon. Somebody was paying attention. Jesus knew that he needed faith for the move of God that he was about to bring in. But he couldn't get him to get the multitude of fish until he listened. You are not listening. Now you can be hearing and not listening. You can be hearing and not listening. Oh, yeah. You don't understand. I, I was a real stubborn kid when I was growing up. And sometimes my dad would say, sit down. I said, I'm sitting, but I'm standing in my head. <laughs> because I was not listening. You can, you can be obeying and yet obeying reluctantly. Because you're not listening. And if we're going to be ready and prepared, God will send us a word. Number two, real quick. Prayer prepares us for what God has for us. Prayer. Tell somebody, increase your prayer life. Lift it up a little bit. Come on. Now, you don't, sometimes you don't have to pray for a long time. But you have to learn to pray all the time. There, there are things that when God started to bring to me, one of the major signs is he started increasing my prayer life. He started pushing. It wasn't that somebody was forcing me to go to pray. I just wanted to pray. Oh, my God. When God gets ready to do something mighty in your life, then your prayer life starts changing. Something starts changing inside of you because the carnal man can receive nothing from the Lord. His ways are not your ways. And so when God starts bringing something that is higher than you, he needs to bring you into a place of prayer where you can now Get to the place where he cannot give you. Watch this. Luke 21, 34 to 36 says, But watch yourself lest your hearts be weighed down and di dissipation and drunkenness and cares of this life and that day come upon you suddenly like a trap. For it will come upon all who dwell on the face of the whole earth. But stay awake at all times. Praying that you may have strength to escape. In Matthew 26, verse 40 to 41, the Bible says that Jesus was now going to bring in the new covenant. And he knew that bringing in the new covenant meant that he was going to suffer on the cross. Because sometimes what God needs to bring to you needs to go through a very difficult and rigorous process. And he told them, Go watch and pray. Because every time God gets ready to bring something, prayer goes ahead of it. When Jesus was coming, the Bible says Simeon and Anna were at the temple praying. Because if they don't learn to pray, they can't receive what God has. Because what God has is on a different frequency. Number three, exposure. When God gets ready to do something major in your life, 
he starts exposing you. Nehemiah's exposure prepared him for the leadership role in building the wall. So all the time Nehemiah was at the palace and thought he was a cupbearer, and the king would talk to people and tell them, you be in this province, and you be, and he thought he was just a cupbearer. He was listening in on the conversation. Okay, 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 okay. He, 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 when the king would call his servants and, 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 and would be talking about economic strategies and strategies of war, the cupbearer was listening in. And he didn't know that God was going to take him from the palace as a cupbearer and make him a leader of his nation to build the walls. Wherever you think you are, you are not there for no reason. God is preparing you for what he has for you. He begins to expose you. When God exposes you to some of the leaders in this church, and maybe he invites you to his house, he, a leader, or somebody says, let's go for coffee, or what? Don't you know? Can I tell you why I think the ten virgins, the five, were really foolish? They're not just the foolish virgins. They're the super foolish virgins. I'll tell you why. Because the five virgins who were foolish had a relationship with the five who were wise. Can I tell you something? God will not blame you for being foolish. But he will blame you for being foolish after he brings you in a relationship with wise people. Because they came around those five And didn't learn anything. Proximity don't mean you're learning anything. Some people are too close to see. And there are times that you can be, for example, in a church like this and God is doing something, but you don't realize it. You don't get it. You are asleep. Moses' exposure prepared him for the leadership role in freeing God's people. When he was in Egypt and he was serving in that palace, he didn't know that that exposure There's some of you, you might work in a company, you might work in a place, and you think, what does this have to do with winning souls? You wait and see. What does this have to do with what God has purposed me to do? And God will expose you to things whilst he builds the capacity inside of you to receive what he has for you. Last, and I'm done. I never stop preaching. I I only quit. So I'm about to quit. But the third thing is, the last thing, fourth thing, is discipline. Now, now, wait a minute. Now, I remember when God used to, began to teach me about some of these things. Discipline. You know the problem with most of us? Most of us think that we're disciplined. And everybody is in discipline in something. You, you know what we do? The areas that I'm disciplined at, I rub it over your head. So if I, if I like, say, lifting weights, huh, why don't you lift weights? You're so indisciplined. Why don't you? If, if I'm disciplined about how I, 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 I'm with my family and I spend family time, that's what I'm emphasizing on. But God wants us to be disciplined in every area of our lives. Because discipline creates a capacity to receive 
and prepares us for what God has for us. Now I want you to look at 1 Corinthians 9 verse 25. It says, every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. What he's saying is that the athlete trains themselves to receive their crown, to receive their trophy. But God wants to give us something, and if we don't discipline ourselves, we're not going to get it. Now, now discipline builds endurance. Uh, discipline will build that capacity. Now, I want to show you a story in the Bible uh, in Judges 7, verse 1 to 8. Now, God was getting ready to do something, bring a major victory in the life of the children of Israel. But so Gideon went out and got 32,000 people because they were getting ready to fight against 135,000. So he had 32,000. Yes. And God said, there are too many. Sometimes less is more. And if you don't believe that, you're not Singaporean. Because Singapore is not very big. Some of our nations are huge and useless. Oh, yeah. Yeah, a bunch of people that can't get nothing done. Like, you put them in a room that nothing gets done. No, sorry, I'm too, I'm, I'm too frank. Big and useless. Less sometimes is more. And so God said, anyone who is afraid can be a part of this army. And fear will keep you from what God wants to do in this church, in your life. Fear will rob you of God's best and what he has for you. So immediately 22,000 people walked out. Then you have 10. God said, it's still too much. So take them to the stream. And when you go to the stream... Those that kneel down and drink the water like this, they're not coming. Because if you're going to drink the water like that, what is going to happen is your eyes is not on the assignment. The water is more important to you than your assignment. Can I tell you something? We're coming into the age of the church that there are many people who are concerned just about their livelihood that they're no longer concerned about the work of God. So their eyes are, I got to get a job. I got to feed my family. And God said, you can't be a part of this army. Then there are others who will lay on their belly and lap it like a dog. And one of the things about when you're drinking water and you're you're laying down on your belly, you see your reflection. And there are people who can't be a part of what God is doing because they're too focused on themselves. It's all about them. It's all about me, Jesus, and all this is for me, for my glory. And But God said, I'm looking for the people who can drink the water, but don't put their weapons down. They're watching after the assignment. Uh, you, can, you can go to work and do what God has called you to do and do everything. And yet, my eyes is on the harvest. My eyes is on the assignment of this house. My eyes is on what God wants to do. I can do this, but my eyes is here. Uh, I, I need to drink water to survive, but I'm not losing sight of the assignment because I am part of an army. And can I prophesy to you, via? 
AFC. God is raising a group of people in this house that are all in. God said, I don't want everybody. I want the people that are all in. I want the 300 that are all in because I can do something with 300 who are all in and I can't do nothing with 10,000 that are not ready. All in. Three hundred people come out, and God gives them three things. And I close with this: three things. He gives them. Now, first of all, the Bible says, and 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 the sword. They had a dream, and they saw the sword of Gideon. Wait, Gideon didn't have a sword. What they saw was the sword of the Lord. That's another story for another day. I don't want to go into it. But he gave the army three things. And prophetically, this is what God is going to give to anyone that is all in in this house. God is going to give you, number one, he said he gave them a vessel. God is going to make you a vessel. And he gave them a torch. That is the light of the world. You, God is going to make you such a light and an example to your community, to where you work, that they will be challenged. And he gave them a trumpet, gave them a sound. Before there's ever any revival, a sound comes out. My God, my God. My God, uh, when, when a revival is about to pursue, a sound comes out. Yeah. And he gave them a trumpet to sound the alarm. They began to sound it. Yeah. Now watch this. He said, put the torch in the vessel and break it. I never, under, I, could, I, I couldn't, I, that bothered me for years. Uh, 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 break it. You can be broken and still burning. You didn't hear what I said. Ah, uh, you can be broken and still shining. Ah, uh, God is looking for a broken people but still shine. A broken people, but the fire is still burning. A broken people that are all in. Somebody stand to your feet. There's an army rising. There's an army rising. I've seen it. There's a new army rising in this church. There's an army rising. There's an army rising. And this morning... I feel a sense to call out, my God, that army. An army rising that God is going to use mightily to change the nations. It's an army. It's an army. Some, somebody said, I'm not smart. I'm not great. You know, one of the greatest things in my life is I consider myself an idiot. And I insult myself in the mirror all the time. Sometimes I wake up and I say, you're an idiot. When Cheeks picked me up, I was telling him, I wake up every morning, I want to be a better husband, a better father. Not great, but I do the best that I can. And God knows I'm trying. And I will push myself. I will push myself so hard because I want to be enlisted in that army. I want to be a part of that army. 
I want to discipline myself so I could be a part of that army. I want to I want to keep on praying so I could be a part of that army. I want to be a part of that army. And God is not looking at your shortcomings about how weak you are. Some of you say, I can't preach. Can you clap your hands? Oh, God can use you. I can't preach. Can you smile? God can use you. There's a lady in my church always smiling. And then there, there, there's a man who came to church and said, I came to church and stayed because of your smile. I didn't know a smile could get somebody born again. God is just looking for people who are all in. All in. And in the next few minutes, I want you to talk to him. Talk to God. Ask him to use you. The problem we have in the churches today, the church of Jesus Christ has a lot of numbers, but most of them are not usable because they are not all in. I want to be 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 enlisted in that army. I want to be enlisted in that army. If that's you today, you say, I'm not all in. I'm not talking about the people who are already in. But I'm not all in. I want to be all in. And be enlisted in that army. I want you to jump from your seat wherever you are because I want to pray with you. Real quick, the king's business takes haste. The king's business takes haste. He said, I've been fighting with being all in. I want to be all in. I want you to stand in front because I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you wherever you are. I want to be all in. 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 There are some of you, God is going to use you mightily in a way. God is preparing an army in this house. A mighty army. This church has been a blessing to, to the nations of the world. And God is preparing an army. An army. I want to be all in. I want to be all in. Forget the past. The future is what's important. What's ahead of us is what's important. Forget the past. Paul said, I press on. I press on. I push on to a higher calling. Forget what's behind. Forgetting what's behind. Moving on to what's forward. Forget the years that the cankerworm has eaten. The years that the locust has eaten. Forget what's in the past. What's in front is what's important. What's ahead of you is what's important. God has great plans. God has something that he wants you to do. And he's building you up for that moment. There are some of you, the Lord says that you've been broken and these hands will be hands of healing. These hands will be hands of healing. You've been broken. There are words that have been spoken to you that have broken you, but there are words that will come out of you that will heal many. That will heal many. That will heal many. God is racing. He is raising a team. He is raising an army. He is raising a people. You are part of that. You are part of that generation. You are part of that. There are some of you who are in the older generation and God would say to you, you are not missing. You can still be a part of it. If you are all in, I can still use you. If you are all in, I can still do something. Caleb said, 
Oh, give me this mountain. Ah, he was 80 years old and he said, give me this mountain. God is not done with you yet. He's not done. Hold on, my sword, baby. Tarry for two minutes. Come on. Open your mouth. Wherever you are, just open your mouth. If you can pray in the spirit, pray in the spirit. If you can pray, just pray. Whatever you, if you can pray and you can say, Jesus, Jesus, use me wherever I am. Then open your mouth and begin to pray. Hold on, my Bahado. I will build my life upon Come on. Come on, come on, somebody. Hey. 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 It is a firm an anointing for every response when we respond right there's an anointing for it for every response there's an anointing and I pray in the name of Jesus as you have, as you have responded let an anointing of God let the anointing of God let the grace of God let the anointing the eternal ability of God Find you wherever you are. Touch you wherever you are. In the name of Jesus. Let the anointing, let the power of God rest upon you. In the name of Jesus. Receive the anointing. Receive the power. Receive the grace of God. Receive the touch of God. Oh, thank you.